Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Ich nehme Diana Cenoyo und äh, ich bin von äh, Rumänien, von äh, Yate Project. Ähm, ich spreche Deutsch nicht so gut, so I will switch to English, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Okay, I'm gonna talk about YATE. YATE stands for Yet Another Telephony Engine. Previously, you've been heard in Mark Spencer talking about how he wants to, uh, Asterisk to become uh, more like an engine for applications. Well, my only problem was that I needed the same thing. I needed Asterisk to be an engine, but that was four years ago when I started the eight. Unfortunately for me, there was no, uh, there was no solution at that time. Oh. Meanwhile, things did change. Meanwhile, uh, about four years uh, uh, have passed by, and the eight started as a, which started as a soft switch has become a, a far more complex uh, solution. So uh, we have the soft switch functionality in the beginning that uh, has uh, that was the um, beginning concept in eight. And then we added the PBX functionalities and so on and so forth. I'm not going to talk here about the protocols because obviously Yate, like any other more modern uh, uh, soft switch, supports SIP, HT3, uh, IX. Well, IX is not that useful, use, use it these days. But well, Yate supports IX too, including uh, trunking. Uh, and of course, it supports MGCP and SS7 and ISDN and uh, analog support and blah, 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 blah. Uh, you can read the list on the website. It's not, it's not that relevant. The relevant uh, part is how Yate can help users and can make their life better. <clears throat> So the first, uh, the first users we, we have, uh, sorry, are the home users. The home users uh, usually need like a soft client. So we develop uh, uh, the Yate client especially for them. The, the businesses are uh, uh, far more interested into having like a small PBX or a large PBX. The problem with businesses is that the, uh, they go all the way from uh, um, four users uh, until uh, 2,000 users. And then you, we have the carriers. The carriers have been our um, first market because we started as a soft switch. And for a long, long time, they've been our, uh, our um, uh, customers. And the biggest application was SIP to HT23. The translation uh, between those two protocols, because uh, because Asterisk has a problem with the HT23 channel, so uh, people wanted to make phone calls to, to HT23, and they've been obviously unable. So they just installed an Asterisk to do SIP, and they installed the eight to do the translation between SIP and HT23. And then we have the third-party service providers. Uh, the third-party service providers are these days probably our major market because every day somewhere in the world I wake up and say, okay, I want to have this new, this new technology, this new service, this, this new thing that I've been dreaming about. And then they end up with us and they ask, okay, guys, can you do that? And uh, usually our answer is yes. We are in this business in order to to fulfill the user's needs. We are not in this business to follow the trends or to tell to the customers whatever uh, technology they want to use. We, we, we really don't care which kind of protocol they want to use as long as we can implement it. That's the most important part for us, the users. How we end up uh, making possible to make more and more applications for them. Uh, and now I, I will get back to the to the discuss, to the history a bit. So I had this wonderful soft switch, which was working pretty well about two years ago, and it has these nice protocols with SIP, HT23, and uh, some uh, PRI, and uh, everything was kind of nice. Was paying the bills and uh, was just fine. Unfortunately, our our uh, customers, which are carriers, have started to see that they can do Chandrix. And Chandrix, it's a very important application. 
It brings a lot of money because they can sell the services. So what we did was adding the PBX functionality, but there was a huge challenge there. How to add the PBX functionality without destroying the soft switch? How to add the functional functionality without making impossible uh, to to remove it from the core of the of the soft switch? We we did actually find a, a design solution for it. And these days, if you want to use the PBX module, uh, it can be enabled or disabled uh, at any moment. In the same time. Uh, one of the great things we gained from there was the functionality for hosted PBX. One of the big challenges is, okay, we have this carrier, he want to sell the virtual PBX or hosted PBX or whatever. And his major problem is that it has two customers that they want the same extensions, like 100. It's, it's so obvious, it's so common to have the extension 100 or to have the extension until 1 to 10 because you, you just have four people in the, in, in the company. It doesn't make sense to have more, more numbers than that. However, in, in the common telephony systems, you, you just can't, uh, can't use the same numbers because the, it doesn't allow you for real to have a virtual PBX. It allows you eventually to have customers with different extensions. Well, that's possible in eight. Yesterday, I had a discussion with one of our customers, which is located right here in Berlin. And he told me, well, Diana, you know what sells me in the routing system? The routing system in eight was the, the, the first idea that we started with. One of the biggest problem we had was, okay, uh, I, uh, I want to route a phone call. Oh, I'm sorry. Seems that my laptop is not so happy with, uh, with me. Uh, one of the biggest problem was, uh, okay, I want to route a phone call by the format. Or I want to set up a certain format based on the fact that the phone call is a fax. That's a very common application. It's not so easy to do it with uh, most of the telephony systems, right? So we started from, from this great soft switch with routing features, and then we've moved to the PBX, and then these days we are moving in the, even further. Instead of being only in the small uh, and medium carriers market, we are moving to high carriers market by adding the SS7 uh, functionality. And we are not only adding the SS7 functionality, but because we have support for MGCP, we can do <coughs> distributed, uh, distributed SS7, which I believe Yate is the only one in the, in the open source world which can do that. I'm... Uh, going to go f further. Now, I will get back a bit more on the, on the history side. In 2003, when we started, we had a very clear idea. We want to do a telephony engine that does smart routing. Everything is fine, great, wonderful. Now, the only thing is, how can you actually beat someone that um, in 2004, we started the company with $500. How can you beat someone that got an investment of $13 million? So obviously, it has more resources than you, more people, and it is in the right market with four years before you. That, that, that's a tricky challenge. It's, it's not that easy. It's not easy to be in that position. So we had to find something. So we decided, okay, we're not going to sell the hardware. We're going to team up with, um, with uh, people that are doing the hardware. So we team up with Sangoma, which actually financed us in 2004. Thank you, guys. We still exist for you. Um, and um, then we, we, uh, we uh, continue to, to develop on the software side. We, we, we completely went into the software side, and we developed the software for the users. Um, what make us a bit more lucky than the other projects that have been around was uh, that we had a great developer, which is the guy that wrote it, Paul. And uh, we got a better design, I, I will say so. It's hard to say, probably someone else should say it. Now, this design means that we actually split it in different layers, different technologies in 